welcome back to Lizzo Wellbeing and the latest Instagram Live. And oh boy, what a topical one. Who knew when we booked this in, it was going to be quite so timely. Yeah, I'm going to be joined by one of my favourite medics, Dr. Rebecca Lewis. She is an experienced GP, menopause specialist, and she's been on here before. She's a fabulous guest. Before we get starting with her, I want to share with you something that's super exciting something that just landed on my desk this morning. <gasps> Brand new issue, the July-August issue of Liz Earle Wellbeing magazine. It is so good. Who is a subscriber? Let me know. Drop me a comment because watch out through your letterbox any day. I guess it'll probably be maybe after the weekend now. It depends on post, I guess, doesn't it? Ta-da! This is the cover. And as you can see in reverse writing, it is the feel good issue. Yeah, it's all about ways to feel good, physically, mentally, emotionally, all of those things. Absolutely jam packed with fantastic ideas. It's a great summer read. If you're not a subscriber, grab a subscription because it's going to fly. We've got great subscription gifts. Just go to lizardwellbeing.com and you can click there to Warners who do all our uh, subscriptions. It's not available in any shops. It's subscription only. It's very special, exclusive, just for this community. So one of the great features is all about menopause and mental health. Let me see if I can find it here. Gosh, there's just so much here. Okay, so breaking the silence we're talking about. We're talking about menopause for mood, anxiety, depression, what happens when we get under pressure, what happens actually with our hormones, brain fog, anybody, mental clarity, memory loss. We've even included a symptom checker, balance menopause app, anybody, make sure that you've got that. And just so much good stuff. So I'm going to crack on and get Dr. Rebecca in the house. Before I do that, I'm just going to add Lainey here. So Lainey is from my team. So if you've got any questions about the magazine or podcast, there'll be a new episode of the podcast, obviously the Lizard Wellbeing Show, going live tomorrow. You're available on all your podcast platforms, Apple, Spotify, all the usual suspects. Or of course, you can go to lizardwellbeing.com and download it directly. Uh, so that is that. Rebecca, I can see that you have requested to join. So I will keep an eye on questions as they come in because I know they will be flowing in fast and furious. There's going to be a lot to talk about. So this is the one that we want to replay. Hello, Rebecca. Good to be with you. Is your volume turned up to max? Make sure you're turned up to max so I can hear you. We all want to hear what you have to say. I'm on max. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you now. Well, what a timely day for us to be chatting. Yes, indeed, indeed. <laughs> Who saw the, the headline in the Times today? I bet, I bet your inbox has been red hot, hasn't it? Well, yes, it has. I haven't looked at that yet because we've had meetings all morning, so I haven't really looked at that very yeah. much yet. But yes, I, I mean, I've, I was on Twitter this morning because it all started to kick off and kind of Twitter, yes. the yes. little me on Twitter tends to be the place where I do kind of newsy yeah. things. Um, so if anybody is not following me on, on Twitter, you might want to hop over there. And obviously I posted the accurate information. Just as, as a quick overview for anybody who didn't see, they were seeming to suggest that studies show that HRT increases your risk of Alzheimer's. And we actually know that the opposite is true. And I gather very briefly that the data they were using was old, inaccurate data based on the old form of HRT, which is not generally prescribed. It's not transdermal modern HRT. They misinterpreted the data, and actually the latest studies show that HRT is protective for Alzheimer's. So, so it's difficult, isn't it? Because um, there are lots of different studies out there showing slightly different things. And this study now is an observational study which does not show cause and effect. It was looking, as you correctly say, with old-fashioned type. HRT, oral estrogens and synthetic progesterogens, which we don't really use now at all. I never do in my practice. And we know that those that combination has an increased risk of 
blood clot and metabolic effects as Which well. Which is why it's not prescribed, Which, generally. Why it's not prescribed yeah. and why we have moved on yeah. to much better, safer alternatives, the, the regulated body identical HRT, which mm. does not have the increased risk of blood clots. So yeah, it's like comparing apples and pears, really. And we've had, as you said, in the past, there have been some, some studies, some large studies looking back in time, showing that actually there was a slight decrease risk mm. of dementia with with women on HRT. So it's a mixed picture, but it actually, you've got to say what type of HRT were they using? Mm. What type of study was what, it? Um, we, need more, know, we need more research. I mean, yeah. that, that, is, that is absolutely... It, it's just a, a, a conflicting, mm. uh, confusing, yeah. clickbait generating headline, which does disservice uh, it does, to all it women. Does, it's, it's and not it's not properly researched. Mm. It didn't have all the data. There was mm. no kind of caveat saying, yeah, but actually, we don't actually use this type of HRT, so how relevant is it? Exactly. You know, I mean, you do wonder, don't you? I mean, to be honest, I've been working now with, you know, on the fringes, obviously it's not my core activity, but I've been working on the fringes of menopause mm. and hormone yeah. health for, you know, the best part of a decade since writing one of the very first consumer guides to HRT, which is why I had met your colleague, Dr. Louise yes. Newsom. Yeah. And it just seems that we are forever pushing a very large rock up a very steep hill yep. because at every turn there is something to thwart us, whether it's estradose, mm -hmm. transdermal gel that doesn't work yep. and is not withdrawn, yes. whether it's incorrect data, whether we're battling inaccurate information, whether mm -hmm. we've got power plays between other medics wanting to chuck rocks at those who seem to be doing yep. well. I mean, it is just yep. it is. beyond infuriating and this is the latest thing so i'm on my soapbox i'm really annoyed about this it's completely as you say it's news bait isn't it it's it's a it's a it's a short snappy headline but let's get for goodness sake we need to know the detail and as soon as you know the detail it doesn't become relevant we don't use this type of hormones anymore and yes there's so much as you say trying to push things forward to help women and it seems to be at every stage to help. trying to prove uh, the opposite when actually we need to think about benefits of, of of treatments completely, out there now. completely you know when is there going to be the headline that says these are the dangers of not replacing your hormones these are the dangers for women as we age particularly because we run on estrogen mm. of not yeah. actually having those hormones that take us safely and well into older age looking at heart disease type 2 diabetes cutting the risk of colon cancer by a third memory loss brain fog let alone all the physical Absolutely. symptoms and quality of life and all the rest of it, women getting taken out of their jobs, employment, you know, having relationship breakdowns. Absolutely. All the, you know, becoming agoraphobic. You know, I mean, it's just, anyway, phenomenal. sorry. It's phenomenal. And the, as you say, the ripple effect yeah. of a woman yeah. rendered unwell due to losing her hormones is enormous on the workplace and relationships. Yeah, um, it's, yeah um, and, and that was why I was really pleased, actually, that my team put together this fantastic article. And it is called Breaking the Silence. Yeah. And you'll know Diane Danzibrink, who we yes. have quoted in here, and how she's came that close to taking her own life mm. and was saved so by estrogen. I mean, this is serious stuff. When you look statistically at the studies mm. of midlife women who die by suicide, mm. it is absolutely shocking. And it's shocking and it's outrageous that nobody is talking about this properly, or very few. Mm present company accepted and mm. some other other medics anyway we will we will pick up on on getting help but just to say actually talking about yeah. studies i have just recorded a podcast with an amazing professor of neuropsychiatry in australia oh, who has done some of the first mri brain scans yes so talking about those studies comparing the brains looking at brain activity and frontal lobe cortex and all that yes. stuff in imaging yep showing the physical differences that happen when yeah. you have estrogen and when you don't. Fascinating. It's fascinating. The, the power of hormones, uh, even as a GP, I didn't, before I got into menopause, I hadn't, I had no idea, I had no idea how powerful they can be on individuals and how it can, how restorative it can be actually having your hormones balanced and back and safe on, the, on one's personality and on mood. In a way, I had never thought possible, and and now see on a daily yeah. basis. Mm. Well, we'll we'll dig into that because I think you know part of my job here at Lizard Wellbeing is the well-being of women, yeah. and particularly midlife women. You know, and mm -hmm. I know many many of you. Thank you for joining today, and for those watching on catch up. You know, have have been with me for over the decades. Yeah. 
you know, I think it's 34 years since I first started with Richard and Judy on this morning and kind of starting this huge adventure and going through different phases of life. My work's kind of always echoed the stage of life that I'm at, I guess, because I'm personally invested in it. So in the beginning, I was writing books about baby and toddler foods and postnatal health and all of that stuff. And then, you know, a big detour into the beauty world and then back again, back into my absolute passion, which is wellness. And of course, you know, having just turned 60, yeah. I really feel that women who are being marginalized with healthcare, gender inequality, who go to their GPs with low mood and depression. And we know it takes a lot of courage, mm. actually, for somebody to go and sit in a surgery like yours and actually start to open up in that allotted eight minutes or whatever we've mm. got. Mm. And then mm. just to be fobbed off with, you're just depressed, have some antidepressants, mm. it's kind of not the answer, is it? No. No, um, the, the, the mood changes of menopause, we know, don't get better with antidepressants. It's nice guy in nice guidance. Antidepressants should not be used as first line because it's not the cause. But the problem is there has been a lack of, uh, again, women's health has been marginalised. There's not been enough research gone on in, in, in women's health in general, let alone the menopause. And a lot of our doctors haven't had the training. Um, I wasn't trained properly. It was only thanks to Louise Dewson, who um, I, I suddenly understood understood about the menopause and that was so many many years ago now but um we didn't have any of that education um mm -hmm. in medical school mm -hmm. or as time as a gp so it's actually everyone needs so much more information and understanding hence doing these sorts of things i hope will really help people and and, and that make them understand what's going wrong well that, that, that's the crazy. point of it i have to say i know you have no affiliation with any pharma companies no. you, know, no. you know very scrupulous on that nor do i never taken a penny i don't promote hrt you know this is because it's such an important issue yep. and it affects all women can we just rewind the clock a little bit here and say how is estrogen affecting the brain what is yeah. physically going on in our bodies yeah Let's get back to basics. What happens? So we all know that the perimenopause is the time when the ovaries start to fail and they start to fail to produce estrogen, testosterone and progesterone. And we know that everywhere in the body, every cell in our body has an estrogen receptor and probably has many cells have testosterone receptors and progesterone receptors too. Less is known about that, but we know estrogen is everywhere. And importantly, it's in our brain, um, all over the brain, there are estrogen and testosterone receptors, but estrogen, we really have seen um, much more research done on that in the brain. There's an area of the brain called the limbic system. Which I'm pointing here because it's in this sort of area of our, of our brain. And that's to do with our mood, our concentration, our memory, our fatigue, our motivation, our get up and go, mm. libido as well, um, you know, concentration. So this area of the brain is very important and it's littered with estrogen receptors. Mm. And we know that 17 beta estradiol, which is our natural estrogen that we produce, produce in the in the ovaries is is very important in regulating all those neurocenters and the nerve centers and modulating the uh, the tra nerve transmitters the chemical messengers um, that ensure that the brain functions properly it has a real regulatory role in our performance in our cognitive performance in our emotional well-being um in our concentration in our memory and most menopausal women will will say yes it does because when they've lost the hormones they feel uh, brain fog they're often their mood not everyone have to say 25 percent have mild symptoms or not at all but the majority will have symptoms and 25 percent will be severe so we must talk about this it's so important and, yeah. and the mood will often drop um, and become very low and much more anxious and this is a real feature of the mood changes in menopause um, depression is a common symptom yeah. um, and, and a depressive symptom is one of the symptoms is, is low mood is a lack in feeling of flatness yeah. isn't there there's people have yeah. described it as just a lack of joy completely just feeling flat it's a, you know almost it's, numb in a way and is that because we're low in estrogen could that be one of the causes it could be one of the causes indeed yes it's a really common symptom mm -hmm. women tell me in the, in the in the menopause clinic all day um i just feel gray i can't be bothered a lot of people say they feel in this bubble this sort of own of their own world of, of of grayness and they can't reach out even to their loved ones or their friends or their 
colleagues oh, too. Yeah. You know, very you lonely. Feel like that. And of course, if you go to your GP mm. and you get antidepressants, mm. which as we know, as you say, according to NHS NICE guidelines, should not be considered as the first line of treatment for menopausal mm. women presenting with low mood. Yeah. Are they going to help or is it just going to further numb you? Often you get side effects from, from the antidepressants and they don't work. So it doesn't really help. Some people may get a benefit. If someone has had depression before for other right. hormonal reasons, um, it can trigger a, a serious depressive episode. So antidepressants may be suitable in, in, for, those, for those people. Um, but it's not going to treat the hormone deficiency that's happened or the loss of hormones from the perimenopause and the menopause as the ovary naturally starts to yeah. fail. Yeah. So it doesn't, it's not effective in the majority of women and, and women could just have side effects. They use, often usually just stop them, but not everyone does. And some people, they can have benefit if they've had previous diagnosis of, of, of clinical depression, because that can trigger okay. another, another episode. Very good point. Before we continue, I'm just going to cover off very quickly. I've seen a comment about a yeah. lady with breast cancer mm. being told that she can't have HRT. We've explored mm. that here mm. on Liz Our Wellbeing and on my podcast mm. many times. Mm. So please go and take a look mm. because it's not always the case. Yeah. And it's definitely worth getting a second opinion. We know many oncologists, breast cancer specialists, surgeons, oncologists, senior professorial level, not just GPs and doctors mm. and consultants, but mm. higher level than mm. that who actively prescribe HRT to those with active hormone receptive, you know, breast cancer. And there are options. We're not going to go into that here because that's not the focus of today. No. There are options. There is help. There's the Bal Balance Menopause app. There is the Menopause Charity. I know they've got lots of really good free downloadable fact sheets. Mm -hmm. Please reach out. Please look at it. Is there anything else on that subject you'd like to add? I would just say that there are options, so non-hormonal options to start with would be mm. the first line. Um, and in severe cases, it, it, with due consideration and proper consultation, HRT can be used if s symptoms are severe. But there are lots of other options. And I think one thing I would say is actually be aware of what the symptoms of menopause are. And then one can take action about them, whether it be lifestyle changes, relaxation mm. techniques, CBT, tremendously useful having a knowledge that our bones become more vulnerable when we lose mm. vision and thinner can motivate um, individuals to, to, to exercise more or weight bearing yeah. exercise, change their diet. So that is empowering, knowing that without, yeah. you don't necessarily need HRT. You need to know what can I do in my lifestyle to control my symptoms. If, if you are someone who, who HRT is not a first line treatment or contraindicate. Mm. So I've just seen a question here about an older lady. Um, her mum is 70 postmenopausal, have been told she can't go back on HRT. Yeah. Um, I'd just like to say that my mum went back on it at the age of 80. It was actually her 80th birthday. What a lovely present. Lovely. So um, it took three doctor's visits, three yeah. different doctors. Yeah. Uh, but it is perfectly possible. Yeah. So please don't go, uh, d don't give up, especially if, if your mum's already been on it previously. I think it's possibly a little bit harder if you've never taken it. I think it is, but I think it's, everything's possible. There's no absolute no in medicine because it's about shared, shared decision making. It's about yes. a few people, well, 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 maybe more than a few, many people go on for decades with their symptoms. I have 90 year olds who are still having flushes and sweats, would you believe it? So some, for some people, if they're still suffering and there's problems, then it's a, it's, a, it's a decision that you and your GP together, because, mm. can, because there could be some benefits for certain individuals. Can we, can we just talk about that? Because that was a relatively new, nice guidance, wasn't it? Directive that came out talking about shared decision making. And I think it's a really important point mm. to make here, because very often we just assume that mm. the, 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 the doctor sitting across the desk or maybe side by side mm. is the only one who has the capacity and the power to make the decision on our health care. But let's remember the mantra, my body, my choice. Absolutely. And actually that's reflected in NHS guidelines, isn't it? It should be a shared decision. It should be a shared decision, even if the doctor doesn't quite agree with, with what's what the patient wants. There are two experts in the room. There's the patient expert and the doctor who's, who should be an expert in what the- I love you. Mm. That, you know, I think we <laughs> all want you to be our GP, Rebecca. <laughs> You're so right. You know, who knows more about a situation? The person who did an hour's lecture maybe 35 years ago or the person who's lived and breathed it 
for 30 yeah. years or even yeah. three years or three months and has yeah. researched and read every paper and lives with it on a daily basis who is the expert there? good question exactly exactly <laughs> and it's so communicating that, together and working together as a team and that's what 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 needs to happen i love i love this comment here ruth mary says i'm not ditching my patch for anyone patch till dispatch <laughs> <laughs> that needs to be a new hashtag. That needs to go viral. That's a good one. Isn't it? Yeah, I like that. <laughs> okay, so do you think that estrogen, this is another good question that's come up here from Gillian. Do you think looking at brain health, um, and obviously, you know, we don't have the clinical studies yet, so a lot of looking at a lot of anecdotal information and evidence from you yeah. actually treating real life people, yes. which of course is hugely valuable. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you think that there is a chance of repairing damage, or is it simply a question of prevention? What with estrogen for mood, for mood yeah, change. Yeah. If you if you take take it early, that then we know actually if you take it sooner that it reduces re chances of relapse of of major mm -hmm. um, psychiatric illnesses. So we know that estradiol, given at the appropriate time, can reduce incidence of psychosis and schizophrenia. Um, patients quite profound I, 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 I wish I'd taken it earlier yes. you know I, I looking back at my 40s when I was clearly my perimenopausal didn't even know the word never no. heard of it no. despite working in health and wellness I mean that just yeah. shows the shocking lack yeah. of information and I look back at the time and you know it was difficult I was highly stressed how much of mm. that stress was due to lowering estrogen you know I had relationship difficulties I was you know work was was very very tricky it was when yes. my business partner and I were selling our, our beauty company yes. you know and, it, and I look back at those crippling headaches mm. and that awful low mood and feeling of overwhelm and stress and just mm. kind of run away and hide yeah. and I think gosh I wonder how different my life would have been actually if I'd yeah. started earlier yeah. because studies do show don't they that the earlier you take That's HRT the yes. better and it's you shouldn't I get messages all the time from women saying Gosh, I've been holding out. I, I, I don't think I'm, I'm should be taking it just yet. I'm just going to wait until I feel really bad. <laughs> really bad. <laughs> but that, that doesn't seem to be the evidence, does it? The earlier you start, the, the, the better the benefits. We know that it can halve the risk of heart disease. It started, well, within 10 years of a woman's last period. But the earlier, the better, so we don't have this drop. It reduces the risk of osteoporosis. Osteoporosis is so common. One in two of us will get that over the age of 50. Um, we know that 75% of hip fractures in the over 65s are all women. And that has a mortality risk with it. Um, and also, if you do survive that for the next year, then you have have um, a more like more much more likely to become dependent 80 percent become mm. dependent on mm. others mm. so it's hugely important to think of our future health it reduces the risk of diabetes colon cancer by 30 percent obesity reduces why the did we hear about that you know i mean we hear about so much yeah. about you know i you know on my 60th birthday i got a lovely letter from the nhs inviting me for bowel cancer screening <laughs> and you know it's just like yeah. why as part of that yeah. it was they're not saying and by the way have you considered the protective benefits of replacing estrogen if you're not replacing it already, which is going to cut your risk by a third? Mm. It will, well, it's, it's very simple to put that in a, in a letter that they're sending out specifically about colon cancer. So important that people realise the future health benefits. Um, so not only does it, it's the most rewarding medicine I've ever done this in that I can give a very safe medication for people who are really suffering. Some women are on their knees with anxiety due to the menopause. I mean, they've become housebound, they've given up their job, their relationships have gone sour, their friendships, they can't even reach out to their friends because they're so socially isolated. And you treat them properly with, with, with HRT and that it can be transformative. People can feel back to themselves. Um, and also for free, we're reducing their risk of heart disease. Yeah. Great. You know, the burden, the financial <laughs> burden on the NHS of hip fractures I costing a billion. I mean, it's, it's just a... ridiculous. And, and I, I did a podcast actually a few weeks ago. I don't know if anybody watching here heard it with a couple of amazing GPs who looked at the research on bone elasticity yeah. and estrogen cells in yeah. bones, particularly for women with eating disorders. So those who've had disordered eating, anorexia, mm. bulimia, whatever, when they were younger, yeah. and saying how important it is to get estrogen, particularly into these younger yeah. women. And you know, even if you can't eat, even if you've got, and please be aware of this, if you've got a young woman in your family or close to you who has disordered eating and is struggling and will hopefully get better, sticking on an estrogen patch in the meantime, don't swallow anything, don't have to eat anything, 
to get that estrogen into your bones because it can become too late. And I had a heartbreaking message actually from a lady who'd been anorexic and I think she was in her thirties, but she had kind of the, the bones of a 70 year old and just knew that she was going to be riddled with cripplingly painful and potentially life threatening osteoporosis later because she didn't have estrogen. And there was some, because she was restricting her eating that was affecting estrogen absorption yes. in her youth. Yes, I mean, I think you, can, you need to be aware of all age groups, as you've just said, people who suffer with anorexia should be talking about their bones and perhaps having estrogen and progesterone supplementation to help that. Um, you know, but it, the mood and hormones go through all our life, don't they? I mean, we have the PMT, PMDD in menstruating women just before the period, the, the mood can plunge and become very much very anxious um, and that's usually a drop off in estrogen which is naturally occurs just before we have our period and also a drop off in progesterone mm. so hormones are affecting us all through our lives postnatal depression is due sure. to you know there's a massive drop in estrogen yeah. after the baby's yeah. born with breastfeeding uh, and it, interestingly looking at hormones start at that time because mm. You know, am I right in saying, you know, particularly in terms of breast cancer, for example, you know, your risks are very, very minimal, you know, during pregnancy and, and when our estrogen levels are so high, I mean, skyrocketing. Yeah. And, you know, so why then? And obviously we tend to get breast cancer as we age, as we get mm. older, when mm. we lose estrogen. So it just doesn't make sense. No, no. But, but there, is a there, there, there is that causation. And obviously, you know, studies are kind of ongoing in that. Mm. And I think there's a lady who's just commented saying, you know, what about genetic family risk? Mm. If your mother, your sister, yeah. your grandmother had breast cancer, yes. does that have any bearing on you and whether you should be on HRT? Well, well, actually, no, it doesn't. What, what I say to my patients is they've had a, a strong family history, they must see a geneticist to see if they're carrying genes or BRCA gene mm -hmm. or they could have extra surveillance or something like yeah. that. They must get that sorted. But actually HRT doesn't increase, estrogen only HRT doesn't increase the risk of breast cancer. Mm -hmm. So their risk will be higher than, than others, but they're things we can do about that and have regular surveillance. Mm -hmm. But HRT doesn't, in, estrogen doesn't only doesn't increase add to that risk. Or won't add no. to it. You might have that risk yeah. anyway. Yeah, you have the you know, risk, which means you know, you make sure that you're a healthy that. weight. Yeah, make sure you know you're not drinking alcohol, yeah. you're taking exercise, you're you know you're being vigilant, and all of those things yes. because you may be slightly higher risk yeah. potentially genetically. Yes, but estrogen but, only but does but not estrogen is, isn't isn't going to have a factor in that, and, and not, it's not so a major factor at all. And the combined blame to blame it. the increased mm. risk is really with the old-fashioned synthetic progestogens, which was less yeah. than drinking one unit of alcohol. Yeah. Uh, well, well, yeah, one unit. And also, I think it's important to say is that you know one woman in seven now, or one woman in eight, will be diagnosed with breast cancer, and that that's all women. So yeah. that's one woman in seven or eight who are on right. HRT. It's not going to prevent you. You know, it's yeah. kind of neutral. Yeah. Yes. So you know, you may still get breast cancer because oh, yeah. you might have you know be the one woman in seven or eight, and but one woman in seven or eight who aren't on HRT. Yes, are going to go on and be diagnosed with breast cancer. So it's kind of it's it's kind of a non-issue really. And women who say, "Oh, but it you know, caused my breast cancer," no, estrogen has been given for twenty years. A really good study for twenty estrogen on its own. So women who've had the the womb removed, a hysterectomy, mm -hmm. can just estrogen. And for twenty years, it showed a slightly reduced incidence of um, breast cancer. In fact, so it's that's not that's not causing it. Um, so that's a really important message to get over, actually. And yeah. it, uh, I know, I know we've, we've gone off on a tangent here, but there's been just so, so much, as always, Rebecca. And I forget how many podcasts you and I have done. We've done together. a few, haven't we, Liz? Must, at, at least three. Okay. There are some yes. Yes. really, really good ones. If you, if, and we've done deep dives yes. into yes. dosing. We've done mood and anxiety and depression many years ago. We first covered this. Yes. We've looked at breast cancer. We've looked at general health protection. Please yeah. look up the Liz Our Wellbeing Show podcast. If you just type in my name yeah. and Rebecca Lewis, you'll get all the episodes that, that will come yeah. up. But what would you like to say to kind of to finish off, particularly mm. talking about low mood, anxiety? These are tricky times. We live in difficult times. The yeah. world's an uncertain place. It's not helpful. 
apart from deleting all your news apps and not watching the news mm. somebody said i was asking me recently about the submarine thing I, was, I actually i really don't know what that is because i don't watch the news yes. and i'm so much happier for it you know if there's a major catastrophic event i'm sure somebody will tell me but yeah. otherwise that catastrophizing i don't actually need it in my life on a daily basis thank oh, you absolutely. so other than doing those kind of practical things what would you say in relation to hormones what would you like to say to I would, women here i would love to say don't normalize your symptoms um, don't put it down to stress being in the sandwich generation. Please look at the most effective treatment for mood disorder of the menopause, which is HRT. HRT now is so safe um, and so effective and has future health benefits. Please investigate properly and get the right treatment for yourself. Yeah, absolutely. And that, as we say, there are lots of free resources. So the menopause charity, brilliant updates. Make sure that you're following them on Instagram. They've got a great website, downloadables. I know there's questions here about um, utrogestan shortages. There are other alternatives. I've seen fact sheets and information being printed about that. Go and check it out. And the same with the Balanced Menopause app. That's kept up to date, isn't it, with news? Yes, it is. Oh, please, just it's free. Anyone can go on that and you can get your health report and you can uh, get the access to a community and 2,000 evidence evidence-based pieces of information there. So it's a good resource. Absolutely wonderful. And of course, you are widely quoted. Thank you for being in my magazine. Oh, it's an honour. your copy soon. It's an absolute honour. Thank you for inviting me, Liz. We absolutely love everything that you do. And I know that you and your colleagues at Houston Health are tireless. You are completely evidence-based. You are completely untouchable when it comes to any kind of bias, any kind of industry funding. You don't even have advertising on your website. You don't promote invasive treatments like vaginal lasers for thousands of pounds that don't actually work or have any clinical evidence to support it. You guys are the real deal and I will continue to oh, champion you thanks. as much as I possibly can because people like you are rare and we love you and that's, we thank you for your time. That's so kind of you to say and your your friendship and support means so much to us thank you Liz. well thank you. thank you i'll let you go before i start to cry so. <laughs> <laughs> thank you rebecca give thank my love to the team thank i will you for do time. Bye, get back bye. to your patients and your surgery bye-bye bye. Bye. <laughs> oh my gosh told you it'd be a good one since she's a star they all are you know and they are simply motivated and driven by the passionate desire to help more women. That's it, bottom line, okay? They are the warriors, they are the front line. People like me just sit around the edges and try and amplify the good guys in this, and they are definitely part of that. So, something else that has really helped me, I hope you caught my Instagram live on Tuesday, if not, it's on catch up, so go watch it, with the brilliant herbalist. Love talking to herbalists, love all things plants. Don't forget that uh, beta-17 estradiol is derived from wild yam, so it's a plant-based ingredient. And we were talking about phytonectars. This is one that we were talking about in particular. It's called I Am Radiant. Lovely, positive affirmation there. This is full of pomegranate, lycopene, sodium hyaluronate, and something that we learned about, I certainly learned about it for the first time, tremella mushroom, which is known as the beauty mushroom in ancient China. So I am using this. And then one that I took last night, I think I shared with you actually, maybe last week, I haven't been sleeping terribly well. I think maybe it's, I don't know if it's the light, if it's the heat, if it's the season, but you know, I don't think it's my hormones because even Kit, who's back from uni, was saying that he wasn't sleeping too well either. This is the one that I had last night and I had the best night's sleep I had in a minute, couple of weeks, maybe more. So this is I Am Rested and it's delicious. I made it with a little bit of warm milk last night before bed. So it was a nice hot drink, very comforting. And it contains lavender, blueberry, guava juice, reishi, love that mushroom, magnesium, and just other phytobotanicals that just help switch you off. Things like passion flower, for example, L-theanine, which is um, that we know is one of those things that helps calm anxiety. Oat beta glucan, very good for the gut. You've got Tulsi, which is holy basil, really, really good. And so I put this to the test and it works. We do have a Liz Loves, of course, 20% off everything at phytonectors.com. They taste delicious. Another thing that I like about them, if you're traveling, if you're heading away for a weekend or longer, they come in these little 
little sachets so it's super easy to pop in your bag or if you want to take one out with you, you can add it to smoothies juices whatever uh anyway love that so thank you everybody at phyto nectars it was really lovely to connect another thing to recap on particularly if you're heading out into the sun either in the uk maybe yeah we had a bit of sun this morning hopefully a bit more coming is the michael van clark uv hair care range big fan of this especially as i do spend a lot of money on my color so this is their range called three more inches slightly provocative name but we won't go there uh, and this is their uv range so it's got uv protection and it's brilliant this is called lifesaver that you put on your hair in the sun then you've got their uv protective shampoo and conditioner and i remember talking to the lovely michael the founder the man himself saying they had to go to the maldives and test it like yeah right you know you couldn't have just gone down to bournemouth you know you had to go to the maldives they wanted strong equatorial sunlight and they tested rigorously hair before and after color treated hair all sorts and found it to be highly effective at preventing uv damage so in terms of brittleness breaking hair strength gloss shine color protection all of that so we do have a liz loves it's 15 percent, and that's vanclark.com also rather loving the hairbrush i know it's kind of a bit of a simple thing to love but look at that it's a lovely silver one this is called the number one brush it's the only hairbrush i use now absolutely love it it's just kind of the perfect shape and texture it doesn't pull the hair styles it really easily anyway you get discount on the brushes as well so um, that's vanclark.com but of course i should just finish up by saying watch out for this little beauty i hope you love it my team and I have so enjoyed putting it together. It is the feel good issue. It's everything for midlife women and more to help us feel good. Let's step into a truly better second half. That's what it's all about. There are some amazing subscription offers. You can use Liz Loves. We've actually got a code for our own magazine. We were talking to the team and saying, why don't we have a Liz Loves on our magazine? So now we do. <laughs> so yeah, you can use Liz Loves. And that gets you three issues for £10. I think they're normally £6.99 each. So yeah, normally what? That's nearly £21. So you get three issues for a tenner. What a bargain. Grab them for you. Share them with a friend. Share it around. Spread the love. I'm going to be back with you. Oh my gosh, we have a deep dive next week. Pen and paper ready, guys, because we're going to be talking about NAD. Who knows about NAD? yeah extraordinary pro-aging cell protection but i'm going to seriously need to have my thinking hat on for that one because it's a deep dive into bionutrition super looking forward to it i'm going to be joined by gabriella peacock's um elizabeth ba bayliss who is their managing director brilliant stuff anyway i'll say goodbye lovely to see you thanks for being part of the chat today Continue the conversation in the comments if you fancy it. Don't forget, tune into the podcast. New episode tomorrow of the Lizard Wellbeing Show. All those back episodes, particularly recorded with Dr. Rebecca Lewis, if you'd like more from her. And I hope you're signed up to the Lizard Wellbeing newsletter. It's free, comes out every Friday afternoon. I hope you enjoy it for a lovely weekend. I'll see you next week. Take care. Bye bye.